Hey everyone, it's Kim from Dream Build Academy. Today I want to talk to you about window shopping, literally, particularly one style of window. I want to talk to you about oversized sliding glass doors. These windows are so much fun, and even though I love a lot of different architectural styles, I often come back to modern or contemporary because of these type of window systems. When you live in them, it just brings the outside in and you just feel it, it changes the experience of a home. I know you've seen these before. Maybe you've had them in a home that you've lived in. Maybe you've been to friends' houses. Or maybe you've toured properties that have had these. I know you've seen them. But what you may not recognize is that there are subtle differences in the frames. What I mean by the frame is it's that piece of metal or that piece of vinyl that surrounds the actual window pane. And these door and window systems, they can operate in a lot of different ways. You have your classic sliding glass door. Think about the home you grew up in as a child, the sliding glass door that went out to your patio, and just picture that mega size. You also have a pocket slider where those big panels all slide together and retract into the wall. I call it walls of disappearing glass. And you have pivot systems. They either pivot and stay stationary or they pivot and they stack. In the homes that I design and the homes that we build, we usually work with the sliding glass door systems or the pocket sliding glass door systems, which we've been using these for a long time. The sliding glass door concept is not new, but what's been happening in the last five to seven years is that the frame that I mentioned is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Structurally, this is a lot of glass. It takes a strong support system to hold this up. They're doing some engineering magic when they reduce the size of these frames, but I've definitely seen a tendency towards bigger sections of glass, frames that are practically invisible, and broader expanses that are being covered with these window systems. When we started putting these in our homes about 15 years ago, we were using primarily brands like Western Door and Fleetwood. Very strong brands. They've been around for a long time. Their products keep getting better and better. But what I've seen emerging are these brands that have come out with the ultra-thin line frames. In the west side of Los Angeles, we use a lot of style line. We use Vitroxa. They're doing some really ultra mega size window systems. Not only are they wide, but they're tall. These large glass systems are better for warmer weather climates. They just don't hold up as well in a cold climate. There's too much expansion and contraction, and they're just not designed for snow load. So when you go into those climates, you may want to consider some alternate brands. You can't quite get that thin frame look, but some of the more standard brands like Anderson or Pella, just about every reputable manufacturer right now is making a large format multi-slide pocket door. So it's important to know when you go into a project what drives these costs and how big of a line item windows actually are in your budget. In modern homes and contemporary homes where the windows really are the main architectural feature, you know, your window budget's gonna be, in a lot of cases, upwards of 200,000. I've seen window budgets that are several million dollars, just depending on the house. It's an important line item when it comes to your overall budget, and it's one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you about this today. So what's driving the price? There's some obvious things. The size of the glass, it's huge. What I've learned over the years is that once you get above certain height thresholds on the windows, that's when your costs go into the stratosphere. You can get a wide door system, cover 16, 20 feet, and still keep a fairly reasonable budget if you set your header heights, that's your height of your window, at eight feet or a max of 10 feet. But when you start to go above that, like to 12 feet or 14 feet, that's when you can just completely blow your window budget. The size of that glass is so enormous and there's so much stress and strain on that glass that it just takes a lot of engineering and a lot that goes into the structure of your building to be able to support those windows and keep them moving freely over the years. So what do you have to do to structurally frame this out? Even with an eight foot, you're gonna have a giant header beam that grows across the span of that window. So the longer you go, the more expensive the beam. If you're starting with you know a 10 foot wide, that beam is a fairly reasonable cost, but as you double or triple that and cover some of these huge openings, you need big beams and sometimes you need to even go to steel. When you put in these larger door and window systems, you have what we call zero tolerance. And the thinner the frame, just the more critical those tolerances are. Everything has to be framed perfectly. Your floors have to be completely level. It takes a higher skill 
to be able to do that and they have to be level going from inside to out because that's the whole purpose of these door and window systems is to bring the outside in. All that has to be dialed in and perfect. We're talking measurements to the 16th of an inch. Having the manufacturer coming out to the site and remeasuring before they do the final window order, it, there's a lot involved with it. So that's what's driving the price. Sometimes these window systems are so big and if you've got a challenging site like a hill or close setbacks or something like that, they have to be craned in. And here's something nobody likes to think about, but in warm weather climates, you're gonna have more rodent problems. So we build custom framing around those pockets. We do extra waterproofing and extra rodent proofing. Another thing that's really important for you to consider is whether the window system that you're purchasing has been thermally broken. I bring this up, you'd be surprised. Some companies do not thermally break their window systems. Now, what does this mean? What is thermally broken? It just means that when you walk up and you touch that frame, whether it's metal or vinyl or aluminum, you know, whatever it is, uh, when you touch that frame, if you're in a hot climate, it stays at a neutral temperature. If you're in a cold climate, it stays at a neutral temperature. The very first systems that we put in, uh, like 15 years ago, <laughs> we were doing homes in the desert and they were not thermally broken. We learned our lesson really quickly. Whatever manufacturer you're considering, make sure that they have thermally broken window panes. So I think by now you probably get the idea that this is a very expensive element of the architecture. And it's something that you don't want to cheat on. There are ways you can value engineer your window openings so that you can get that look, that expansive look and that function that you want without breaking the bank on your budget. And here's a few quick tips. Tip number one, stick to the manufacturer's standard sizes for height and width. If you need a taller wall of glass to get the look that you want, Use clear story window systems above the sliding glass doors. Tip two, break up large spans of glass with posts, small walls, or even some fixed panels of glass. The savings could be well worth it. And you know, this applies to intersecting corners also. That look requires a ton of steel. You might need steel plates in the floors. You're gonna need steel cross beams and headers and potentially even moment frames to build it properly. With that comes the extra cost of design, engineering, labor, materials, and time. The dollar signs will just keep going up and up. So if intersecting corner glass is a must for you, then work with your architect to add in a support post somewhere. Don't worry, it's not the end of the world. I've seen homes even in the ultra luxury price point that have used support posts creatively to get the look. Tip number three, pick aluminum for your material. It's usually the least expensive option within a product line. Tip number four, if you've tried all this and you're still over budget, then you might just need to consider the less expensive window brand with the thicker frames. And one more thought in this subject. If your style is modern or contemporary, windows are one of the most important decisions. So I would actually include this topic in your interviews with your architects and your builders before you hire them. Ask them about their preferred window brands and how much experience they have installing them. Ask how successful they've been in keeping the windows waterproofed and rodent-proofed over the years. Have there been lawsuits? Have there been failures? Find out if they're open to working with different manufacturers and what they would do to create details for a brand that they haven't worked with and how they would work with you to value engineer window and door systems that meet your design and your budget objectives. Here's the bottom line. If you're creative, open-minded, and you've chosen the right architect and builder, there's no reason you can't meet your budget and design objectives. And before I sign off, I have a little cheat sheet of large format window brands for you. So if you'd like a copy of that, just DM me the word windows and I'll send it to you. So I hope this puts your mind at ease and gives you some comfort with these types of windows. I cannot wait to see your project. Keep me in the loop and when you finish something, send me pictures. As always, like and subscribe, share it with your friends, and we'll talk to you soon.